Eurobloastomas. Thanks a lot for the introduction, and I want to thank the organizers for the invitation and the possibility to present at such a representative and comprehensive congress dedicated to various aspects of treating Euroblastoma. I have quite a difficult task to tell about modern aspects of treatment. In the course of 15 minutes, I'll mainly focus on treating the patients of high-risk groups. I'm not going to dwell upon the fact that neuroblastoma is extremely heterogeneous in terms of its cause, and this predefines several risk groups, usually three, that differ greatly in terms of uh, forecast, and the uh, growth point is high-risk neuroblastoma that demands the introduction of new treatment methods. So I'm going to focus on the modern trials that have been completed and the results of which were presented in the sphere of treating this group of diseases. The possibilities of various causes of the diseases, spontaneous regression or progression in patients of older age, lead to the fact that neuroblastoma is a model of risk-adapted therapy in pediatric oncology, and the majority of centers, not all of them, uh, use the German model in accordance with NB2000 protocol, a modified one that uh, envisages gradual increase of the intensity of treatment, and uh, trans including transplantation technologies and different options of radiotherapy as remote uh, uh, remote as well as radio uh, target therapy also I want to draw your attention to uh, unify standards of assessment of our patients so that include the risk of imaging CT and MRI and this will allow, except for uh, INRGSS, uh, post op to turn uh, to this INRGSS. This uh, shift will be gradual, but the introduction of the new system of assessment of neuroblastoma is necessary that will take into account all the known parameters plus the date of metabolic activity based on scintigraphic uh, data. Without uh, stopping on these slides, uh, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the correct assessment of uh, imaging risks uh, may allow to select the patients who will need surgery in specialized centers and minimize the risks, in particular for patients of low-risk group or observational patients, and to standardize and allow comparative analysis of the results of trials in various clinics based on various protocols. We need to introduce international neuroblastoma risk group staging system uh, for patients with localized neuroblastomas L1 stage and L2 stage if at least one of the factors is present in the last case. The main topic of my presentation are high-risk neuroblastomas. About 50% of patients belong to this group, and the criteria of uh, identification are quite universal uh, from the point of view of patients with MICNA, uh, stages 2 and higher, and patients over 18 months of age, uh, stage 4. But after now, the issues in terms of tactics of uh, management of patients with uh, stage 1 and the MICNA and high-risk group, uh, whether they are high-risk or intermediary risk, and patients uh, 12 to 18 months of age with fourth grade, and uh, most probably we have to study uh, the factors uh, uh, more deeply to stratify intermediary and high-risk groups. The main breakthrough in terms of uh, uh, event-free overall survival happened in when high-dose uh, radiotherapy was introduced, and the immunotherapeutic approaches also uh, contributed a lot. But 
primary and secondary resistance remain of uh, high importance. Strategy of treating patients of high risk group are well known. We have the induction consolidation phases based on high dose hemotherapy uh, together with the transplantation of hemopoietic stem cells and post consolidation. In the foreign countries, it always includes immunotherapy for the patients with good response to therapy. The main task of the induction is to decrease the mass of the tumor as much as possible with further high dose chemotherapy and then treating the minimal residual tumor. In spite of this well-formed concept, the situation in reality is more difficult. Around 20% of patients have refractory course and 3% of patients um, may have relapses of the disease further on. If we analyze different phases of treatment, the question about induction therapy remains open, though uh, recent trials made a great step forward unification of this area, starting from the key publications and analysis and prospective studies carried out in the beginning of the 90s by Professor Chang from Memorial Hospital in New York. It was shown that intensification of therapy and those compressing regimens are possible, but uh, all this may have certain benefits compared to standard three weeks intervals used in the US and in Germany, uh, in Russia as well. And some groups incorporated new drugs into these standards, in particular uh, topoisomeras the inhibitors first type like topokikan, but if we sum up all the results of uh, all clinical trials, it is clear that around 13 to 24 percent of patients have primary resistance, and hence, most probably classical cytostatics have already achieved this, uh, their maximum, and we need new approaches to overcome resistance in this group of patients. Out of the uh, recent studies, the randomized uh, uh, study that compared rapid conduct uh, standard reg uh, regimen with the American uh, regimen, uh, uh, they compared these two. The median of observation was 1.7 years, uh, and uh, uh, BSV two years uh, allowed to the results show that it may be considered as a standard therapy. We have to understand and uh, uh, identify the patients who the response will be uh, worse to standard therapy. For example, 11Q deletion patients predefine worse response to therapy. Hence, clear. Uh, detection of primary resistant patients may be quite difficult, but on the other hand, the importance of response to induction therapy uh, is of uh, great significance, and it impacts overall survival and uh, event-free survival. You see this on the diagrams. What? We have to understand still the better comparison regimens uh, between rapid Kojak and the American GPO H56 uh, uh, ALK inhibitors. And they're used for some patients. This is already being implemented within the framework of prospective uh, trial in the US. Uh, YBG therapy, REL. And some groups, including St. Judas Hospital in the U.S. and Professor Loder's group, uh, demonstrated uh, the possibility of uh, simultaneous uh, anticlonal um, antibodies regimens with standard uh, uh, modes, uh, standard regimens of chemotherapy. The patients with primary refractory neuroblastoma will be included into uh, the trial with two arms uh, that uh, the first uh, arm has MIBG plus BUMEL with high dose uh, uh, TOTEPA plus BUMEL, sulfon melphalan. There's a trial that is going to be open in European countries. We are not going to dwell a lot on the local control, but it is quite evi uh, evident that it is of critical importance for high-risk patients. There will be two other presentations today, uh, not mine, that will touch upon these aspects. And it should be mentioned that there are various data 
for example, uh, on the impact of uh, radicality of uh, therapy on the prognosis and the radicality of the surgery uh, in Germany, for example, showed a significant impact on overall survival and event-free survival. Um, they will speak about the local control and different approaches to radiotherapy, but there are many unresolved questions in terms of selecting the dosage for patients who have achieved complete response and patients who have microscopic residual uh, tumor. But it will be Alexei who will tell you more about it. To consolidate therapy, most of the groups convention use the carboplacy, entropazine, and morpholon uh, composition, and its different modifications. Nonetheless, prospective CPAN studies uh, tried to compare the regimen of symphalon to the same reg regimen. Three years event free survival uh, on the middle statistical level was better in patients. One Cephalon and Rufalon, but uh, all the other uh, lesions apart from uh, vein static hepatic lesions were also present. Uh, so, Prostolon is a standard for high dose chemotherapy and SEMPEN studies in Europe and pilot studies in Germany and US demonstrated the, the acceptable profile of toxicity in use to Cephalon and Rufalon vis a vis other regimens of induction chemotherapy. Tandem transplantation, it was studied uh, in the U.S. after induction therapy used within a pediatric oncological group. The combination of tetrapasphosphamide and SAM regimen improved event-free survival in patients with high re in high-risk group, irrespective of application or non-application subsequently of immunotherapy. Nonetheless, extra studies are needed. Uh, and within the next randomized uh, clinical trial, SAMPAN will also deal with the issue. Tandem transplantation issue will be raised in patients with uh, bad response uh, to standard induction, convention on induction therapy. And uh, nonetheless, everyone is interested in one of the elements of multimodal uh, therapy, post-induction therapy. The key study Alice we published in 2010, which explicitly showed that immunotherapy therapeutic cartel, which he, he included not just anti-CD2 antibody, but with GM and CSF and interleukin-2 and isotretinine increased uh, significantly in standard risk group uh, event-free survival when uh, we received at least partial response to induction therapy. Then it was about uh, the optimum regimen for mononuclear antibodies uh, to reduce toxicity and about the necessity of using other cytokines uh, recent studies have been uh, compared standard short infusions of anti two anticlonal um, anti tails without interleukin two. It shown that there is no impact of interleukin two upon the uh, results of the treatment. But nonetheless, 40 percent of patients on interleukin two couldn't uh, finalize the treatment due to a very serious side effects, which entailed uh, further uh, another. A trial to understand the role of cytokine in the enhancement of anti-tumor uh, cytotoxic activity of anti-monoclonal bodies. One of the elements of reduction of toxicity is the length uh, of the introduction and 10 years instead of uh, standard uh, infusion of mononuclear antibodies reduce the dependency on antinucleotic energetics and to reduce the uh, syndrome and uh, the next courses of chemotherapy, and that way uh, we had SEP in randomized treatment uh, clinical trial. There were uh, 10 days infusions of anti-mononuclear antibodies. They were compared uh, between the two groups who were receiving interleukin-2 uh, subcutaneously in smaller doses. But there was no si any significant elevation of survival-free, uh, of event-free survival. And uh, in one of those groups, in uh, at Nation, it's only anti-G2 uh, 
until monoclonal antibodies uh, you know, had shown the same frequency of response in comparable indicators of survival uh, versus the studies which use the broad range of other immunocytokines. That way, these are the results presented at us uh, Congress this year, and they enable us to contemplate the use of lengthened infusions of DB. LTI is the standard of medical aid, at least in European studies. As to uh, the issue of uh, post-consolidating therapy uh, in US and in Europe, uh, those uh, medical drugs are used. There is the pilot data that in most likelihood achieving special specific concentrations and they're supporting against the cycle of 13 cis acid could impact the uh, prognostic value. So they should be individual dosage, especially for younger children. Here you can see the major directions of treatment of patients with neuroblastoma. And in the morning session, an issue was raised about molecular genetic changes and different biomarkers, which would enable us to differentiate uh, to uh, treat high risk group in differentiated way. You should look the overview how it's possible to identify the patients in ultra high risk. Uh, um, Dr. Kongerstein uh, last year uh, published it in the journal. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Denis Jurevich. Are there any questions? I have a question. Denis Yurevich, for the first time for me, I heard this uh, uh, term, dose compression regime. Is it the same as dose time intensity or something new? These are the synonyms of the regimens in which there is the chemotherapy done in the interval with 10 or 15 days. Fisavia standard conventional chemotherapy in many tumors of neuroendodermal origin, and the results were shown in Prague conference in Europe, so viewing laws actually. I think that those uh, the regimens uh, or more intensive introduction are having lots of advantages vis-a-vis -vis conventional induction therapy. We can compare the results of SAPIN, which compares different concepts of treatment of patients from the standpoint of induction therapy, quite lengthy but very intensive when it comes to cumulative dosages. There is induction program in Germany and very compressed uh, 990 a day's regime and circus I have a question. In your Rogachev Center, uh, you go along immunological development and also molecular genetic direction as to TCARs. Did you ever discuss TCAR in consolidation with anti-GD2 TCAR, TICARs, or is it for future? We don't have time, so we cannot cover all those aspects, all those different directions of treatment. But in point of fact, as to the use of uh, heart uh, cells in patients with solid tumors uh, more uh, difficult than in oncological uh, and uh, just uh, hematology, maybe because it's rather uh, difficult uh, for competent cells to penetrate the tumor ones, and maybe uh, there is the micro surrounding element which inhibits these. And there are studies uh, uh, done in, in the Anderson uh, Cancer Center in, in London as well, but I wouldn't see that it's strongly improved clinical results. There are several publications uh, on it, each and every conference on neuroblastoma, this issue has been proactively discussed, but I wouldn't say that that entailed uh, drastic clinical improvements in part from the fact that there is a response uh, in some of the patients. But this technology has been developing and advancing, so there will be called a, a cell therapy and maybe other options, immunotherapy or conventional therapy, which might increase anti